The first part will be a little introduction that will be given by myself. Then we have a, a second part about engineering process enhancements, where we will discuss the various enhancements that we brought in by the Osmos project that will include some demonstrations of the tools as well. In the third part, the demonstrator that we will that we have built as part of the Osmos project will be explained the setup in more details. And I will conclude again with the fourth part where I introduce our storage modeling exercise, as well as the conclusions and recommendations out of Osmos as a summary. Next slide. Okay. Yeah. Our work, no, next. Okay, the work on interoperability that we did in Osmos, what was the scope? The scope, as it has already been mentioned, was focusing in our part of the Osmos project on interoperability in the context of IC61850. For those of you that are familiar with IC61850, you know that IC61850 basically addresses three aspects. It addresses the aspect of the engineering of a system, the configuration, design of a system, basically. It introduces as well semantic data models to model our applications. And last but not least, it also addresses communication communication between the different devices. In Osmos, we looked a little bit closer into the first two aspects, which was engineering and the data model. With regard to engineering, one of our goals was to enhance the engineering process that is described in the part six of IC61850, with the purpose to have better interoperability but the main focus as well to have a higher engineering efficiency to, to design and to build projects. A key point that we addressed here was also to add a formal specification capabilities to the process that go a little bit further than they are defined in the standard today. Again, with the goal to increase the efficiency as it will be explained later on. With regard to the data model, the goal was to verify and enhance the semantics definitions that we have in the standard. On one side, the specifications that we have for substation automation. IC61850 originally was introduced with the, in the context of substation automations, but later on, it was expanded to the larger domain of smart grids. So a focus in our uh, demonstrator work within the Osmos project was as well the storage systems, as Osmos is dealing with electrical storage in general, and uh, with, as part of the standard extensions for distributed energy resources, we also include storage. And it was also a purpose to validate and, uh, and provide feedback to the data models that we have in the standard, these new data models that can be used for storage system. Next slide. Okay. Now, why is this important or why do we consider that this is important? Why do we need standardized semantic models? I think a semantic, a standardized semantic model of any applications helps a lot in one side to understand how things work, but also for an efficiency of an integration. If you look as an example, if a DR management system knows what data point to use, as an example, to set an active power in each and every device that it has to control, it's much easier than if it needs to find out in every different device which data point is now used to set to, for the set point for active power control. So having a standardized semantic data model not only helps the understanding, it, it significantly helps as well the integration work. From a specification and design process, a fully digitalized specification and design process, again, helps to increase the efficiency. Uh, the way that it has been laid out is that it can be template-based, which supports application standardization within a utility, and as such, again, increases the efficiency of a utility when it needs to deploy multiple projects 
that are based on the same standards that the utility has applied. That's some of the motivations why we think the, such a standard is, is quite important. Next slide. Okay, so how did we do that? As part of our Osmos project, we basically have built a demonstrator that will be presented later in this webinar as a playground to verify and improve the concepts, verify the existing concepts, improve them, verify the improvements as part of uh, the demonstrator. So with regard to the engineering process, we implemented the proposed enhancements that we developed as part of our work initially. We implemented them in commercial available tools. We tested them in the playground of the demonstrator. And during that phase, we further improved the, the, the process itself. So basically, uh, on the experience that we learned with the demonstrator, we could refine the process that we had initially defined starting from the process that is already defined in the IC62050 standard. For the perspective of the data model, we modeled on one side a feeder with typical utility requirements in order to provide feedback to the standard where data points were not available that typical utility requirements needed. For the part of the storage model, we defined a little application for storage that I will introduce at the end of the webinar with the goal to verify the 61850 modeling concepts for DR that have been published in 61850-7420. The standard was basically in development, the edition two, while during the Osmos project and has been released in the end of last year. Next slide. Okay, what is shown on this slide is the application scenario of the demonstrator. So we have assumed a little substation. The reason that we have started from an application in substation is that there where we have already a lot of 61850 devices available on the market that we could use to verify and improve the standard. So what you see on the left side, we modeled one feeder with a typical protection functions breaker failure functions, of course, the control functions, single check, auto reclosing, and then also some measurements. So a typical feeder as we may have it in a transmission substation. We added to that substation a storage bay, and the storage bay was basically used to, uh, to uh, care for overload of the line. I will explain the application later in the, in the webinar. This substation was built twice so that we also had the communication between the two substations. So it was assumed we have the two substations that are connected through the line that we modeled on the left side here. So we also had communication and engineering exchange for the two applications at the end of the two power lines that we could also test, which is a part of the 61850 engineering process. So that was our playground for the demonstrator and for our work in the Osmos project. And with that, we can go to the next slide and I hand over to Thomas, who will start the introduction to the engineering process enhancements. Thank you, Christoph. So yes, in this uh, chapter two, we will speak about the enhancements that we introduced in the 6850 engineering process. And I will start by giving an introduction and an overview of the different elements that we identified and that we worked on. Uh, you can go to the next slide. And before we get uh, into the details of the enhancements, we need to speak about uh, what our baseline was. Um, so we started from the existing latest version of the standard, which is already proposing an engineering process, as you can see uh, on the image on the left, which is from part six. And the standard is already proposing a process. And in this image, you can see the different tools and the different files that are exchanged uh, between tools. And these files are written in a, a configuration langu language, which is called SEL. And we also started from the current version, the current latest version of SEL, already 
including some concepts like functions, which we recovered then uh, in our later, later work. We also started from the current state uh, of the available engineering tools on the market as a starting point in order to uh, improve them within this project. Next slide, please. So in order to show what we uh, introduced, uh, on the left, you see an image with some tools and some steps that we added. Um, of course, the main goal is to improve the overall engineering process efficiency and also allowing efficient specification management, which means that we want to um, improve the traceability and the, um, and the fact that you can still retrieve your specification from the configuration stage. And in order to improve the global engineering process efficiency, we worked on four topics. Uh, first of all, the extension of the specification stage. So uh, with our enhancements, we allow now to create a system specification, including data flow, which is vendor independent, and which is optionally also independent of the physical allocation of any function. Second topic is improving the interface with IED suppliers. So today, a lot of time is lost uh, when IED suppliers have to prepare an offer. And we want to improve the interface by allowing users to provide specification, which already includes data flow. And secondly, allowing suppliers to, uh, to have more flexibility in uh, the physical allocation of specified functions. And as a third point, allowing comparison between specification and offered IEDs, which will improve for the user the, the evaluation of what he gets back from an IED supplier. Third point is about improving the specification management. And this means including traceability of specification in configuration files. You, you will have the uh, opportunity to trace back what you specified in a configuration file and also uh, trace back if the implementation and the specification is equal or the, if there is a difference between them. Next slide. The fourth point is about automating the configuration stage. So if as a user you are um, if you can make specification which already contains data flow, then this means that the implementation of it in the IED can be automated. Um, also, we introduce some enhancements or some extensions in the ICD files, allowing a more uh, fluid implementation or um, in the specification in order to create your configuration. Next slide, please. So the next slides are about, uh, in the next slides, we will, we will go into detail of each topic and uh, zoom in on each specific enhancement. So the first one is about extending the specification stage. What we did is extend SEL with elements to allow now data flow uh, between functions and subfunctions. This is done inside the substation section of SEL. And um, one of the main um, improvements is also that it's now not mandatory anymore to allocate your functions to IEDs in order to be, to be able to specify data flow. So you can, as a user, now create a um, uh, vendor and IED allocation independent system specification. Um, another improvement or another scenario that we took into account is also the exchange of specification between two different projects. So uh, this is uh, specifically useful for the case where two substations, for example, need to exchange uh, teleprotection trips. So this is also a use case that we cover. Next slide. The second point was the improvement of the interface with IED suppliers. So we introduced the concept of virtual IEDs for IED specification. So as a user, you can create uh, with the virtual IED a, a specification for an IED. 
but also allowing now an IED supplier to select himself the optimal allocation uh, by providing an uh, allocation independent specification. So as a user, you will have both options now. You can already allocate everything into a device in your specification if you uh, specifically want um, a certain physical allocation of your functions. But you can also now leave that choice up to the IED supplier by presenting him a system specification which, is, which does not contain any uh, allocation uh, constraints. We also extended SAL, allowing now IED suppliers to document the mapping deviations between their devices and your specification. You will now have the opportunity to see exactly if what you specified has been implemented or proposed uh, identically by the IED supplier or not. And since it will be present uh, in SAL, you can use compare functions or compare tools to compare your specification with the, uh, with the IED offer that you get back. Next slide. The third point is about uh, improving specification management. Um, we introduced the concept of function specification descriptions, and these are um, function templates that a user can build to build his own profile, which he then can uh, instantiate inside his uh, specifications to, to build his system specification. And by creating this um, concept of templates, uh, together with the SL extensions, you will now improve the traceability of your specification inside configuration files. You will have the opportunity to trace back which version of your template is used inside your specification, which is very powerful um, for traceability and also for automating the update of your specification when your concept changes, for example. Next slide. And then the last point is about the automating the configuration stage. Uh, as I introduced, the data flow is now in, already inside your system specification, which can enable more automation in implementing this data, the specified data flow inside the IEDs. Specifically, if the ICD file now contains the necessary enhancements to automate this step. So by improving specification, we allow more automation in the configuration stage. And that's what we, we are really trying to achieve here by enhancing uh, the, the global enhancement of the engineering process. Next slide. I give the word now to Jörg, who will introduce the 6-100 standard. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, welcome and uh, thank you for having me contributing to this seminar. Uh, please, we can start with the next slide. So I'm going to talk about the impact of uh, the work that Thomas has presented on the, the standardization. Uh, this picture shows uh, engineering process enhancement, uh, yeah, uh, or let's say the engineering efficiency roadmap behind 61850. Um, so at a very early time, uh, the bottom-up engineering was, uh, uh, yeah, was uh, really uh, the only way to to do it. Even if in part six already, since um, 2000, uh, 2000. Uh, Three, uh, the engineering process, the top-down process was uh, was described, uh, but only now with edition two and edition two point one, uh, and uh, the the engineering process as defined in SCL Part Six is uh, became reality, and here the limit is uh, that we can nicely specify our electrical system and the functions. Uh, but as soon as uh, we come to the data flow, how the applications are interacting, how the functions are interacting, uh, then um, 
so we we need the the IEDs, the hardware, and uh, we need the IED tools uh, that create finally the part of the SCL file with the IED configuration. So that is uh, the the current status. Uh, all the improvements that um, Thomas has just mentioned, they uh, are now defined in a technical report, 6156-100, uh, which is the next step then uh, on the for the top-down based engineering with major impact uh, on um, the specification process uh, as we have seen it. But this will not be the, the end. Uh, further work is ongoing uh, in the working group 10 uh, about basic application profiles. And uh, with this work on application profiles and also with further enhancement on 6100, uh, we will have uh, finally the possibility to very efficiently uh, specify in a formalized way in SCL uh, the complete uh, application behavior of a, of a system. Next slide, please. The core element of the, the 6150 engineering process are these uh, SCL files. Uh, these SCL files are not database files. Um, they sh should not be seen as the only source of truth to define a system. Uh, their purpose is more to be used as an exchange medium between tools of different brands, different vendors. Uh, and uh, the technical report 61850-6-100, that is now an extension of this uh, SCL scheme, uh, which is today defined in part six of the standard, uh, adding new X XML elements, uh, which are introducing the features that Thomas presented. Um, the uh, SCL language has uh, or the S an SCL file has basically four uh, large uh, parts uh, or sections in the file. There is a substation section, an IED section, uh, a type section, and the network section. And the, the impact of the 61850-6-100 is focusing on the substation section. So that is why the IED independence of the specification comes from. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just uh, once more a um, uh, really rough classification what is contributed by 6-100. So we have these extensions in the substation and process sections with all the data flow. Uh, there is also the introduction of the concept of a virtual IED. So up to now in this IED section, the IED was the description of the IED, but now in this process enhancement that we described in Osmose, uh, there can be a virtual IED in the IED section an ID which uh, saves, which is used for specification or which is used uh, for simulation and not yet necessarily uh, a physical box. Uh, and furthermore, we have references between SCL files uh, to have a much more consistent um, uh, document management over the different files over the time and the project lifecycle. Next slide, please. When we look uh, exactly where the 61, the 6-100 improvements are, are uh, uh, related compared to the part six, uh, then we have first the specification tracking. Uh, in uh, the 2.1 SCD file, we don't just have this. In 6-100, we can track specification uh, and compare the implementation against the specification later. Um, in uh, part six, we do not have any information in the specific on specification level about um, data instances. So if we have uh, protection logical nodes in our specification, 
then yeah, maybe we have an initial value somewhere with the, the, the type, the underlying type. But if you have several instances of, uh, of functions of logical nodes in our electrical system, we cannot attach uh, specific parameter settings to each instance. Um, that is something which is improved in 6-100 also. Then very important, uh, the data flow in the in a specific substation section based specification in part six, uh, we cannot indicate the data flow uh, in uh, six dash one. So if we want to use it, we need somehow to put IEDs in and uh, prepare data sets and so on. With six dash 100, we can uh, specify uh, the data exchange. And because we are independent of uh, even of a protocol and IEDs, the data exchange can be not only a 60, 1, 50 data exchange, it can also be uh, just the specification of wiring or even of internal data exchange inside a relay. And in this way, we can document a complete application or protection scheme. So finally, we have the uh, relationships. Um, in the current 6150 uh, part six, we have uh, functions uh, since I think since 2012, uh, functions in the substation hierarchy, uh, but they have uh, one place in the hierarchy, but in reality, there is uh, the need for much more relationship between functions inside the, the system. So for instance, um, a measurement function which calculates uh, the, the power needs the, the current and needs uh, the voltage values. Uh, the current voltage values are uh, coming from very different places in the electrical system, uh, different primary equipments and so on. So um, uh, in order to, to express this relationship uh, that the measurement function um, or the, the power calculation function uh, is relying on measurements uh, on from, from different primary equipments. Um, uh, there we need more complex uh, relationships. That is what we have introduced also in 6-100. Yeah, and finally, um, uh, conceptually introducing uh, a virtual IED. Um, at the first glance, uh, it's just an IED data model in the same way as the ICD, uh, but, or the IID. Uh, but if you think a little bit, little bit more, then uh, we find a lot of points which are different. For instance, if the ICD file defines the maximum number of uh, entries in a data set, then the ISD description defines the minimum required number. So the specification uh, specifies a minimum with the same value. So it's basically the same, but we have a dis different interpretation of some of the values. Next slide, please. So and, uh, this is the final slide, which is showing just the same thing in a, in a graphical representation. Uh, the left side is the substation section, the right side is the, the IED section. Uh, and we see that um, we have uh, uh, on the left side in the substation section, the, the blue and green uh, uh, enhancements. Uh, so we see mainly that most of the additional XML elements we are, we are discussing in, in 6-100 uh, are added to the substation or the, the, the power section. Okay, so I think this is an overview on the impact uh, of the, the standard on, on the standard. And now I would like to hand over to Camille. Thank you, Jorg. So uh, now I will share my screen. And um, now I, I will present you what are the impact on tools, because to execute all this process we have seen up to now, we need tools. Uh, we already have two kinds of tools to, to handle the IEC 61 activity process, which are the IED configuration tool and the system configuration tool, the ICT and the CT. With our proposal, we have introduced a new role, a new tool role, which is a system specification tool. 
so it's not really new. This has been mentioned previously in the standard, but it was not really described. And now we, we really um, enforce this concept of system specification tool uh, to be able to handle uh, this, this first part, which is uh, the tool which will be used by a user to express his needs and his requirements for a new project independently of any uh, IED implementation. So for this new tool, uh, what is really important is to support the creation of a vendor independent specification based on what you just presented, uh, the 6-100. Uh, and uh, one important thing to understand is that here I am speaking about tool role and not tools directly. This means that this tool role can be provided by a system configuration tool also. So you can have one tool which have two roles, which is a system specification tool and the system configuration tool, and maybe for some others also IED configuration tool. And the, as we can see in this picture, the most important thing for system specification tool is to be able to import SSD files and FSD files. So FSD is a function specification and to export SSDs for the system configurator and also ISDs for the IED configurator. So I remind that the SSD is a system specification description and the ISD is the IED specification description. Then the second tool which, which is impacted is the ICT because now the ICT need to support the import of the SSD or of the ISD to understand the specification of a user. And based on the specification, the tool and the, the manufacturer or the user which use this IED configuration tool uh, should be able to create what we're calling the extended ICD. This is what uh, Thomas presented uh, previously by saying that we have push um, improvement of the ICT and this extended ICD is containing also the description of the implemented process. This means that with this extended ICD, you will adapt a generic ICD to a specific, um, specific project to be instantiated in this project. And last, uh, last tool, but not least, is this is the system configuration tool, which now should support the import of the SSD. So the SSD was already defined in existing process, but now it will have to also support the SSD with the extension of 6 100. And it should also import the new extended ICD, which will be provided by IED configuration tool. Um, and finally, it shall understand all section of the 6-100 to help user in uh, automation of the creation of the data flow between real devices, uh, thanks to the new extension of the specification for data exchange, uh, independent of the implementation. But <clears throat> better than uh, explaining all point uh, which has to be implemented one by one, it will be better to show you um, how it has been implemented in two tools uh, because Osmos uh, was first a research project to improve the, the standard and the, the engineering process offered by the standard, but also uh, one goal of the project was to demonstrate that, that this, um, this work is this this evolution is really working. And so some of this evolution has already been implemented in different tools. And I will present you first on my side, uh, a demonstration on the SST, the system specification tool, uh, which will be based on a demonstration which has been held during the Osmos, which is an exercise about teleprotection. And this will be done by uh, the Schneider Electric tool, IPASI. And then on the SCT demonstration, it will be done by Jörg just after my demonstration. And it will present how to use an SSD to create a project and to implement real devices. And this will be done by Elinx STS system tool. So now I will switch to, uh, 
to the demonstration. And before demonstrating how, how it works, I will just uh, show the interest of this work. This is a block diagram, the block diagram of the different function which has been uh, defined for Osmos. So uh, they, they are two different devices here, one which is a BCU and another one which is a, a protection device. And both of them has to handle different functions like uh, zone protection, like uh, circuit breaker, uh, like auto closer. And they have to manage exchanges between them. Up to now, with 6150, you have to select your devices, so the BCU and the protection device, put them in your, um, in your system, and then model the exchange between them. And now, with uh, our new tools, uh, we will be able to, um, to do it uh, without at the, C, at the specification level, we will be able to do this without any uh, implementation. So here, I already have some, uh, some element already created. So this is the teleprotection exercise I spoke just before. And you can see here that we have a structure. So here we are inside the bay. We have different functions. So this is a breaker interface. We have uh, first the breaker interface and a breaker for each uh, for each phases, uh, and then we have also the teleprotection function, uh, which are already partially um, partially configured. So instead of showing you uh, what has already been done, I will show you how we can work with this new process. First of all, uh, as um, as Thomas already presented, we now have the capability to specify functions. And I will import uh, first a uh, description of a function for uh, auto recloser. So this is this import. So I am importing this, and I also import uh, the same for the distance protection. This file has been created by, by, um, by a profile tool. And by importing them, now I have a library of functions, which are here represented by two bay. And I can go inside them and see my uh, functions, which has been specified with function allocation with the, the IEC 6182 logical node, so ROC for uh, auto recloser and two automatism for one phase reclosing and three phase reclosing. And for each of them, we have here the list of uh, inputs which are expected. So first thing I will do is uh, I will move this to uh, my existing bay. So I put this here. I will do the same with the distance protection. So for the distance protection, so you can see here that we have much more uh, functions. I will close the view and here you can see that we have a lot of uh, functions which has been specified for distance protection for the zone one, for the zone two, zone three and so on. And again, I will take that, copy this and put it in my existing specification. So here I paste it. And now if I come back here, I can simply remove this. I can just remove this from the view to keep my library or in this example, to make it simple, I will just delete them. Now, based on the original specification of function, I will be able to uh, change them, to adapt them to uh, my specification. So for example, I will keep only the zone one protection. So I will delete all the other protection. And then for the auto reclosing, I know that uh, I need to, I need to configure exchange between my auto recloser function and my distance protection. I need to, uh, so for the one phase reclosing, I need to uh, receive the start uh, by one phase zone one. And for the three phase, I need to, re to receive the start for, uh, from, for zone one for two and three phase. So this has been specified originally in the uh, functional specification. So to do that, uh, 
I will just have to, uh, sorry, it's on the wrong screen. I will come back here. So this is a new interface here where I can see all the data available in my configuration. And uh, to, to, uh, to fill uh, this specific input of my auto recloser. So I have just uh, to search this description. So thanks to, uh, thanks to good naming in the original specification, I can directly find the data I have to use here. So now I know that uh, on my specification, so again, there is no ID up to now, but I know that in my Q1 uh, bay, in the function F, uh, AR for auto recloser, in the one phase auto reclosing, I am receiving, I need the data which is coming from my subsession B, uh, F1. So it's the same, um, it is in the same bay, so Q1, but in another function for the zone one. Uh, one phase protection, I need to receive the, uh, the, the trip general. I will do the same just for the other one. So this time I will just change here. And now I will receive the start for, from the free phase. And now the, doing that, I will be able to aggregate a lot of function specification and to make the link between them more easily and again, completely independently from devices. Second point, uh, now what, what can be done is to allocate this to virtual IEDs. So I will create one, two virtual IEDs. So you can see here now I have created two virtual IEDs which are fully empty for now because they still are uh, virtual and I don't know what to put in them. By default, they are named B1 and B2. So I will go there and just change their name to know uh, how they will be used. So the first one will be the BCU and the second one will be the protection. And coming back here, I know that I have to allocate to all of them the different uh, function I have here. So first I will take, uh, if I come back to, um, to the, the block diagram, I can see where they are supposed to be allocated, but I know this, I will no, no, not show you exactly uh, on this diagram, what is it. Uh, I know that I need to allocate the RLC, both GAPC and the interface breaker to my BCU. And I know then that I have to uh, allocate the, the breaker per phase and the distance protection and also the teleprotection to the protection device. So all of them has been allocated now uh, to these virtual IEDs. And now you can see that uh, for each logical node, they are allocated to a specific device. So this one is allocated to protection. Uh, with specific rule, we can automatically uh, create a good logical device architecture. And if you want to see more in details, I can go in the detail view and you will see that here you have all the logical nodes which were specified originally uh, independently of any device. They have been allocated to my virtual device. And continuing to do that, now I have uh, so the different uh, exchange which has been specified at the specification level. And now I can uh, one by one say that uh, I want to generate the data flow at the virtual IED level. This can be done at a virtual IED level or at real IED level. But for real IED level, I will let uh, your to show it to you later. Um, I can generate automatically the data flow. So I can do it one by one, or I can do it uh, for all at the same time. And then you will see that all is green. This means that all of the required exchange has been automatically generated. And if you come to the protection, so the protection, you can see that we have created a goose 
because it has been specified to be exchanged by Goose in the specification with the two data I have selected previously, and they are sent to both GAPC of the BCU. This is more or less uh, how to create a specification independently of any vendor. And now I will uh, give the ball to, to Jörg to show you the next step of the, of the process by, uh, by showing how a system configuration tool can take benefit of that. Thank you, Camille. Uh, so now we have a nice specification of a substation. And the first step is that this uh, specification file as an SSD is imported into the system configuration tool. And, uh, you are not sharing your screen? Yeah, it's still turning around. Now it should be there. Yes. Okay, thanks. And uh, this import uh, is done uh, on the tool. There we have an import button and we can import it. Uh, I have already run this import uh, and the result uh, is now visible here. Uh, we have um, the substation B here. From um, other parts of the process work, we have also the substation A. Uh, that has been uh, uh, at the beginning of the project. Then we have merged uh, the substation B from, from Camille's file. And we can, uh, we can see in detail the work that uh, Camille has done. So as a starting point, uh, we can have a closer look. Uh, so we have the, the single line here. We can have a closer look here inside the, the functions. Uh, I have to say the import file I have been using is not the one that Camille created right now. I used the previous complete one uh, with more information, but you can recognize uh, Camille has created a virtual IED uh, that he called BCU, Bay Control Unit, and he has an auto recloser function there, or we have the protection unit with an FDIS function. And we have also uh, the, the protection scheme uh, where the, the two substations can exchange data. And uh, what we also see, and this is information which is coming from, uh, from the SSD file. So just let us have a look at this. Uh, so what we imported is uh, just uh, this file here in SCL. And I do not want to go to all the details. Uh, just here you can see there is a function. Uh, the circuit breaker interface, Please, further down we will find auto recluse and all the other ones. And you see there is, um, uh, there is a logical node ID name none. That means here we are in pure specification phase. We do not have any relay related to this. So um, if, we, uh, if we want to, uh, to see where, where we are from the, like we, we, what we also can see here, the status of all the signals is specified. And we do not have a, a relay related to it. Uh, what we also can, uh, so in, in the overview, uh, I can show you here the, where we are right now. Uh, so we have the, the orange part, that is the import from Camille's SSD file. We have the complete substation structure and we have the communication specification and we have, uh, have logical node types here. And the next step that we are going to do, we are going to add IEDs. We are going to link the specified logical nodes with the logical node uh, in the IED. So that is the, 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 the pure engineering work uh, really to figure out which logical nodes is used where in the process. We need to make sure that the data types from the specification are fully covered by the data types of the logical node of the implementation. And finally, when this is done, then uh, we know our relays are able to fulfill the specification, at least from a signal and, and communication point of view. And then we can take this communication specification 
and we can create the data set and control blocks inside inside the relay. And that is what we are what we are going to do now. Um, first, I, what I've not yet shown, uh, Camille has already made uh, the data exchange, specified the data exchange, and what Camille has created uh, that uh, is also visible here now. We can go to the applications tab, and uh, there we have the some goose applications. And for instance, if you look at the auto recloser, then we see here the start, which goes to the auto recloser. So there's a, a graphical representation of this uh, uh, source ref, source ref elements that we find in the specification file. Uh, so and now we go to the, the first engineering step of the system configuration tool. As a starting base, we have the specification, and now we are going to a place where we can add relays to the SCD file. I have already here added uh, yeah, a gateway and uh, also one bay controller for the substation A. And now I will add also the BCU and the uh, protection device, but this time not a virtual ID. This time I'm going to add an instance of a physical IAD. And in the overall process, the SSD file has been given here to the engineering, but the SSD file or the ISD files extracted from the specification have been given also to the relay provider, manufacturer, relay vendor. And they have configured the relay so that the relay matches uh, our specification. And these relays, um, they are described as ICD files, and these are the files that we are going to use. So I'm taking here one relay as a BCU from Inge team, and uh, yeah, just call it BCU. So then we have the same name as the as the role. Uh, let me call it um, uh, substation uh, substation B voltage level E zero one BCU. So we don't uh, so we are not uh, on the virtual ID level anymore. And I'm taking uh, here from IFASEC uh, the protection unit. And this one we call then substation B, E01 pot. Uh, now we have brought these two relays into the SCD file and we can connect them now to the subnet. This is then also manipulation of the SCD file. So the IP addresses are given uh, and the subnet is then, um, oh, this is wrong. Don't want to connect it two times. So we connect it here. So now we have the relays. Uh, and so coming back to our, to our picture here. Now we have the relays in, and we have also the data types of the relays. And now comes the next step that we need to allocate all the logical nodes from the relay to the, to the system. And uh, again, coming back to what Thomas has said at the beginning, uh, engineering uh, efficiency through templates as a part of the li template libraries that we are using here also, it, there's also engineering templates which remember the mapping between the BCUs, uh, between the relays, the, the virtual relays and the physical relays. So I can use here a button with, a, with one click uh, and say implement. And now I'm, I can select for the BCU, the physical BCU that we have created. And I can select here, for the protection, the protection relay that we created. Now you see things changing a little bit and the system has all automatically already uh, now allocated all the logical node. And if you are looking in our signal list down here, then you can see that the status now for the signal is for instance, implemented as specified. Uh, so the implementation works very well. There is one problem. This is here, the CSWI 
there we have two unresolved signals and I let, left this in as an example. So it's a selection close and selection open signal that we had specified for a time but did not, did not use. So um, you see, this is an example uh, when, the, when the, the data types of the specification and the data types in the relay do not match. So we have some, some missing signals here in the relay. Uh, then with 6-100, we can extract the information. Okay, here is the data missing. No? Uh, but for now, we are not so, so much concerned about this. Um, we are happy about this mapping. Um, let us have just also a look in the in the substation A for the teleprotection. There we have already already done a mapping. So uh, there we have already a physical IED. And if you have a look here on our uh, station level, there we have a gateway, and all the gateway is implemented. So we have now we have physical relays. Uh, for every specified section of our, of our part. And we can come to the last step, which means uh, to create now the communication configuration. Uh, so all these mappings are done. Now we can take the communication specification here and create the, create the, the, uh, the configuration. I do this here with, the, with one click and uh, then uh, because of the missing signals, we get some errors. I do not look at them. They are just in detail. We can just have a look at the result. And at the end, we see, for instance, that we have here a goose matrix where goose messages are sent, uh, and uh, with, which includes the, the drip, uh, which are coming from the distance function. And we see publisher and subscriber for the goose. And we have a similar view for the uh, MMS reports, ah. uh, so where we can see where, where all the MMS reports are configured. Okay, with this, I'm at the end uh, of the demo. Uh, just at uh, one summary, we went through the complete process, SSD creation, loading into system integration tool, loading ICD files, creating SCD file as an result and this SCD file can now be consumed by the ID configuration tool and the relays can be configured. And I think that is something that you will see uh, now in the following presentations. Thank you. Okay, I guess now it's me. If I'm not wrong, uh, I will share my screen. Are you seeing? I think so. Yep. Okay, so uh, I will um, show you a little bit about the demonstrator uh, that we had uh, in Lisbon, in, in uh, Portugal, in the RD Nestor laboratory. Uh, so, this laboratory in Sacavine near Lisbon uh, has the ability to, we can do a real time power system simulation with hardware in the loop. Uh, and so, I'm going to briefly present this laboratory and then how we set up the demonstrator. Um, and a little bit how we documented the, the results. So um, in here you have a basic drawing of our laboratory. We have uh, our working room where we have the mounting racks with our devices under test. We have workstations with uh, all the software that we need to control to access the devices under test uh, uh, and the general testing equipment. And we also have um, a smaller room where we place our noisier equipment or equipment that might need some some air conditioned uh, some some air conditioned uh, conditions uh, yeah it's some um, yeah um and in here you can you can have a, a 
a perspective of the laboratory. In the end, you can see this is the, our testing room with all the racks here where we placed the, the, the equipment for this demonstrator. And in through the window, we can gl glimpse a bit our, our um, computation room. Um, so this is a, a, scheme, a schematic of, um, of what we have there in the lab. So in our testing room, with the workstations, the devices under test, the interfaces of our real-time power simulation system, and then in the, in the computation room, we have the, the, the computers that run uh, the real-time power system simulations. We have also some, um, some time servers connected to the GPS antenna to, to distribute the, the time synchronization through all the devices in the laboratory. And we also have some, some uh, traffic generation and impairment uh, devices that we use for for to test uh, um, some network uh, in some network simulations, Ethernet network simulations. So what we use here for Osmos, the uh, real-time power system simulation platform that has the the processors and the and the interfaces. So the interfaces with um, inputs and outputs, analogic and digital. Uh, and then we used our workstations with the where we where we uh, um, communicated with the devices, devices under test. So the IEDs uh, provided by, by the partners, Siemens FA second engine team, and uh, also the time server uh, that was used so that all the devices were, were synchronized by the same source. And here, this is just a basic, uh, a basic drawing of of what we had there so we had two substations as as has been said each substation has one line bay for a line that is connecting substation a with substation b and each each bay has two um ieds one uh, bc or bay control unit and the protection for the protection functions uh Altogether, it's uh, three different. Um, okay, it's not in here, uh, but it's uh, three different. Um, yeah, it's three different vendors. So uh, Siemens FA second G team, and as has been said, so the for also for the specification and system configuration uh, phases, uh, different tools were used. So for for the substation A, uh, it was specified with a links. Uh, and configured with ng team and for the substation b it was specified with the schneider tool and configured with the e links tool um, here is just a picture of the two um, racks with the devices under test so uh, protection device of substation a bay control device of substation a and protection and bay control device of substation b uh, in here, uh, we have a bit more detail on how we set up the, um, the demonstrator. So this is a, a detailed for one substation. Okay, so in one substation, for one substation, you have two devices, the prod device and the bay control device. Uh, and you can see uh, different types of, uh, let's say, signal flow. So with green, it's the hardwired connections. And with the uh, uh, red and blue, it's uh, uh, through communication. So red is goose communication uh, and the uh, blue is MMS communication. Uh, you have on the left um, a representation of the, let's say what, what is um, uh, simulated in the real-time power system simulator and the interfaces between it and the, and the ID. So, the real-time power system simulator has interfaces to send the, uh, the switch gear positions of the breaker of the insulator switch gear. And there's also sends the line voltages and the line currents uh, to the protection and the bay control devices. The voltages and currents uh, are amplified by outside of the, of the simulator. It's not represented here. 
Uh, and then the IDs send back to the simulator the, the trip signals and the control signals for the closing and opening of the, of the different switch gear. Then you can see here this uh, line in, in red represents the sending of the trip uh, from the protection device to the bay control device, which was something that we also saw in the, in the demonstrators previously. And also this line here shows the communication between the substations because the protection devices send each other this from substation A to B and from B to A, they send the teleprotection the teleprotection signal. Um, yes, most of the tests were done with this setup with the real-time power system simulation simulator, except for the synchro check function that uh, we use the different, uh, we use an open loop uh, setup. All the others were through um, closed loop uh, setups, so hardware in the loop setups. And finally, we have here also the a workstation with the HMI software uh, so that we can uh, communicate with the IDs with, with MMS. Basically, it receives the, it can receive the reports and it can also send the commands to open or close uh, devices. Uh, now, in here, it's uh, the, um, the system that we simulated in, with the real-time power system simulator. So it's a very simple system. Um, we have a bus bar of substation A and bus bar of sub substation B, the line connecting both uh, substations. And in these boxes here, we have uh, the detail of the, of the bay. So the switch gears uh, contained in, in the bay. And then we have uh, uh, other lines uh, out, uh, adjacent to these substations. And uh, what we can do here then, and some, some fault elements, and what we can do here then is simulate faults. So we can simulate faults in the line between substation A and B, in the line behind substation A, or in the line uh, behind substation B to test the, for example, the distant function, different, uh, different zones of the distant function. And then we can also simulate faults at the bus bar with these green elements. So as I said, the switch gear equipment is, is uh, contained in these boxes, uh, and I, I can show you um, I can show you in the next slide. Um, just again, the, the trips, the trips uh, and controls sent by the IDs will enter into this simulation to, to control uh, the equipment here inside these boxes. And also, for example, the voltages simulated of in this bus bar or in this line here, in this point here, in this point here, will be sent to the IEDs uh, through the IOs of our uh, real-time power system uh, simulator. So this is the detail of the that box of the substation equipment from the bus bar to the line we have three two two switch uh, insulator switch gears qb1 qb2 the the circuit breaker here and also this one the uh, earth switch and then inside these boxes we have further further logic which is where we basically simulate the, the, the functioning of, uh, of a switch gear and the, and the circuit breaker with regards to the interfaces. So it's where the commands and trips are processed and it's where the positions uh, of the breaker uh, are, are also processes, processed to send to the, to the IEDs. So uh, regarding the tests, uh, this here is, um, I will speak about an example for a teleprotection a test on the teleprotection function. Um, in, and so what we did was that we simulated a fault in 10% uh, of the line at the distance of 10% of the line with regards to substation A, so 90% with regards to substation B. And this means that the Substation A, the, the prod device on substation A will see the fault uh, very near and will trip, will 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 detect it in zone one, which has an instantaneous trip. 
and in the device in in substation B. We'll see it farther. We'll see it in zone two, which has a a trip delay uh, configured. Normally, uh, in this case, around 400 milliseconds. Uh, so generally, normally, this the device in substation B would would trip after this delay but because of the communication between substations the protection on substation b will receive the teleprotection signal and together with the zone 2 detection it will realize that it can trip and it will trip just after the teleprotection signal um, reception when it trips it will send the, the prot device will send the trip information to the bay control of the same bay so that the bay control knows bay controller knows to initiate the auto reclosing function uh, to reclose the cbe after at that time if the fault has already disappeared okay now um okay uh, this was already what i explained these signals are exchanging with goose so the teleprotection from A to B and the um, trip information from the prod device to the bay control device. And here it's the waveforms of the test, which I will later show you, make a bit more zoom so that you can see a bit better. Uh, so here you see at one, so at 100 milliseconds, the simulation of a fault in phase A, which is in red. Uh, and then there is the the um, so the the device the prod device detects this and one, on the teleprotection reception um, it will uh, it will execute the trip so um, and this and this trip you can see it here because the fault current um, disappeared so from here on the the current is at zero it means that the phase A opened. Uh, so then you have the dead time of the auto recloser, and after the dead time, which is approximately one uh, one uh, second, you see that we have again current in phase A. So it was a successful trip and a successful auto reclose. Uh, in here we cannot see uh, particularly well, uh, but okay, if if I had not if the protection had not received the teleprotection signal. Uh, the default would be eliminated much later, near the 400 or 500 milliseconds of simulation. Uh, instead, it was below the 200, which means that the trip occurred at least uh, before 100 milliseconds, roughly. And so now, just for you to see a bit better, I will see, make a zoom in in this part of the of the simulation. So. You have here the fault appearing at 100 milliseconds and disappearing at about um, 70 milliseconds after, more or less. So this is already with a, a delay simulated in the opening of the breaker. And here you see the voltage uh, also uh, reducing at the moment of the, the appearance of the fault and then going to zero when the fault is, when the breaker the, fa the, the phase A of the breaker is, is opened. So in here, also, this is part of the results of the simulation. Uh, we are looking at the digital uh, signals. Uh, so in here, you have the trips that the ID sent to the real-time power system simulation simulator, and also the, the, the positions of the breaker. So for those who don't know, uh, the breaker has two, two signals for its position. It's a double point. So as a closed and as an open, normally a closed position means that the closed signal is on and the open signal is off. In this case, what happens when the, tri the trip arrives here at, uh, at the, you can see it in this tree. What happens is that only the phase A open so two phases are still closed and one is is open and this means that the closed position is lost but open position doesn't go on because only one phase is is on so this is the normal behavior when you have a three-phase position scheme 
Then you see after the one second when the auto reclose, uh, when the bay control unit sent the auto reclose, you see here the, the pull signal that it sent to close the breaker. So these signals were acquired from the real time power system simulator and sent by the IDs. So we can then, for example, measure measure the <clears throat> the dead time. So we measure it from the time that the fault disappeared, which is when the the circuit breaker opened the pole A, and then we measure the time until the <clears throat> the time until when the IED sends the pulse to close. So and we see that it was one second and some some milliseconds. So roughly one one second, which was what we were expecting. Now um, I will discuss a bit on how we we documented this. So I, I made I gave you the example of the teleprotection uh, uh, a test for the teleprotection function. Uh, we have more. So we have a testing procedure uh, where we um, where we defined how to do the test for for the different functions. And we have for uh, distance protection and the switch on to fault. We have for the teleprotections, for the synchro check, and for the auto reclose. These are the tests that are part of the subset two that we defined. Um, the subset two of all the functions that um, that uh, that we have. So uh, for each substation, we have a, a testing procedure that then is filled up with the results of the of the tests that we have done in the laboratory like the one that I showed. Uh, just a note here is that this uh, this document is not going to be part of the of the public uh, deliverable. Uh, but it's going to use it's it's used uh, so it's uh, used internally to let's say to take the conclusions from here to to put in the in the public report. So an example again of uh, of a small section of this report so for the for the teleprotection uh, tests uh, we have here a table in which we um, define six tests so they are basically the same test so six variants of the same test uh, in which we simulate faults in zone 2 it means the 90% of the line okay uh, in uh, for example in this case but it could be over 80 percent it's zone two so we make these six subtests one for each one fault in each phase so a single phase fault in each phase of the line which should be followed with a single phase trip and then we do another three tests with uh, phase to phase faults which should be followed with three phase trips and then we do document the result in with the time it took for the trip to be done uh, and this is the time that the the trip signal is measured on the real time power system simulator with regards to the initiation of the of the fault and this is the, another exam, example uh, for the auto reclose we also have for the exact same type of faults we also measure for example the um, the the dead time so the time it takes for the id to 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 send the reclose signal and uh, we conf confront it with uh, the time that it was uh, configured in the system configuration uh and this this was what i wanted to show you so uh, just one last thing is that uh, obviously we have much more tests so i just put here some examples that had a bit to do with the with the with the test example that I showed before. Yeah, so I think now um, it's uh, Christoph that will proceed with the next part of uh, of the presentation. Thank you very much, and I will stop sharing. Thank you. You should see my screen now. So <clears throat> I come to the last part of the webinar talking about the storage modeling exercise and as well coming to the conclusions and recommendations out of the project. Um, when we talk about the storage and about distributed energy resources, 
there is a, as I mentioned already before, this the part of the standard 61850-7-420, which is dealing with modeling distributed energy resources. It has been revised and there is a second edition that has been published by the end of the last year. When we look at how we have to model a DR, that depends, of course, on the information user that is interested in C in the information that we are producing. Uh, DR management system typically will not be interested in all the technology specific details that the DR has. It typically needs to know the generic characteristics and where to apply set points, these kind of things. A DR owner on the other side, he may be more interested in some technology specific details. If it's a photovoltaic cell or if it's a, uh, some other kind of generator. So there will, he will be probably more inter be interested in the specific details, typically as an example for asset management. So when we look at the model of a DR as it has been developed in the part 7420, a DR as a resource has typically two parts. It has a generic model and then it has a technology specific model. So when we talk about the DR resource in the context of the 61850 standards, this can be a single DR, but it can also be aggregated DRs. So a DR resource can also be a complete collection of uh, multiple DRs. The resource describes typically the aspects of the electrical resource that can possibly be aggregated, which is typical capabilities, ratings that we have from the DR settings, but also status. A resource can be a generator, it can be a load, or it can be a storage, which then has as well load and generator capabilities. If the resource itself is a single DR, it will also refer to the technology specific logical node of that DR. In this slide, I have a little example of a photovoltaic system. On the right part, we see the conceptual model. So we have a generic part, which is the generator that represents the characteristics of this system as a generator. And then we have a reference to a specific logical node, the DPVC, the, the photovoltaic that represents the information specific to a photovoltaic. So in our model, we would have in this case, possibly in the logical device combined one logical node DGEN representing the generic character characteristics of this photovoltaic system as a generator. And then has, having a reference to an instance of a logical node TPVC, which itself would have all the additional information specific to the photovoltaic uh, system in that case. The complete model of a DR or DR controller is not only the resource part that we have looked before, we also have references to the electrical reference point. That's where the DR is connected. But then we also have a logical node for the power management. This is a model for a black box component that manages the DR based on the different requests and decides what the DR at the end of the day will produce uh, in, the, in the case of a generator, what it will produce. And then we also may have a couple of operational functions that can be multiple ones. That's all the different functions that we want to support in our system. It can be things like an active power control, but it can also be any kind of grid codes that will provide constraints. So for that, we have a complete series of logical nodes as well. Okay, after this short introduction of the 7420 standard and the modeling of a DR now, I will explain our battery application that we have used as an example in our Osmos project. The use case that we were looking into was this power line that we have seen before that has, uh, Juan has shown the testing of that line. So we have on one side, this power line. Now at a certain moment when the load on this line would get too high, instead of preventing the, the line to trip, we came up with a use case where we would use the battery system to take that over that excess load during a certain time, which means the excess flow that would be above the limit that we have on the line would be stored 
on one side in the battery and the same amount will be fed out on the other side of the battery. So we have a kind of a virtual power flow realized through these two batteries. Once the load goes back to normal or beyond the, the limits, the system will revert again so that the batteries are again in the starting point of uh, 50 point, 50% so that they can react on both sides. So that was the use case that we wanted to use and to test and on that use case as well, test uh, the 61850 model that we have in the 7420. So basically, when we look at the model, the DR resource now has on one side a generator element because the battery can act as a generator. On the other side, it has a load element because the battery can also behave as a controllable load. And then we also have the generic DSTO, the storage element where we have the storage characteristics, all the, the, the ratings related to the storage, like maximum energy that can be stored, these kind of things will be modeled through this logical node. So that's the modeling of the resource. And then of course, we have a logical node that models the battery itself with the battery specific characteristics. Uh, for our use case, we used one operational function that was defined in 7420, which is the load following function. Basically that can determine the power that we have to produce by the battery at the lowest, at the load side and it has been consumed by the battery at the generation side. So basically we implemented the use case that the battery at the load side is controlling the process. So we implement this load following function. When the load goes beyond a certain limit, which would be the rating of the line, the battery now starts to generate the excess power that is required starts to generate this from the battery. On the other side, it will send the request to the battery on the other side, and this battery on the other side will store that same amount. And for that, we use the function active power control to execute that request from the battery at the opposite line. To test the model, we have used the simulation as we didn't have the devices in, the, in our lab setup, we used the simulation there and we used the product DTM from Triangle Microworks distributed test manager that allows us to simulate substation applications, but also simulate other applications. So in this case, we simulated as well the battery controller with the complete model of the DR and the battery itself. The behavior of the battery itself was simulated in DTM. It's basically possible in DTM to simulate complete systems or parts of the system. Uh, when we are using IC61850, the simulator can be directly configured through the SCD file. And for the function simulation on one side, there is a library available that supports default behavior for logical nodes like uh, control logical nodes, uh, reclosing logical nodes, but we can also define custom applications in using 1131 uh, function block diagrams and structured text. And that's what we have used for our battery simulation. So here we see basically the function block diagram of the simulation. At the same time, we see also the, the model because we have structured the simulation that every logical node is a function block and they were connected together through this function block diagram in the simulation. So we see here, our operational functions, we see the load following function that receives as an input, it measures the load that it has to follow. It has a threshold parameter and as an output, it requests uh, energy uh, power to be generated. Uh, the power management function, which is the next part here, based on its various inputs, it would also have an input from the active power request when it gets the request from the other substation. It also, of course, knows the state of charge from the battery that it receives from the generic storage element. And based on that, it decides 
if it has to request uh, load, which would mean the battery would charge, or if it has to request generation, which would mean the battery would generate it. So this is the part of the DR resource. So that was the application that we simulated. And with that, you could on one side show that the models that we have in 7420 works, and we could also verify our little application. Uh, so the individual logical nodes, they were implemented in structured text as function blocks. So we see here an example of the function block that describes the, that implements the load following function, relatively simple functions, but with that we could simulate our complete application. Conclusions on the battery part of the exercise and the modeling. So we were able to model the applications with the logical nodes and the data objects that are defined in the edition two of 61850-7420. What we found is that these models are rather comprehensive. They are quite large. And in some cases, there is redundancy in the information models in the way that it left, leaves the user to choose between options, how to, what, how to represent certain information as an example. In the storage, we can have the state of charge expressed in what in what hours or in percentage of the full uh, load. We also can, uh, instead of expressing a state of charge, we can express energy available for discharging and energy capacity to be stored. So there is a couple of different options in these models. So what we think that it may be reasonable to think about in the future from a standardization or from a user perspective that we define certain profiling for specific applications to limit the variation so that we can really achieve interoperability as well on that level. And with that, I come to the last slide of our webinar with the key takeaways from, the, from our part in the Osmos project where the focus was interoperability of 61850. With regard to the engineering process, I think it was based on the Osmos demonstrator possible to provide feedback to working group 10 to extend the standard so that formal specification can be supported. We worked closely together with the development of the part 6-100, which is providing these extensions. So these extensions have the overall goal to improve the efficiency of the process. We could validate those extensions in the demonstrator. And one of the good things is as well, through the demonstrator, these extensions have been implemented as prototypes already in commercial tools. This will certainly help as well the market introduction of these new features. With regard to modeling DRs and storage, as well as modeling as well the, the substation part, for the storage part, we could uh, identify that the models could be verified with a practical example, so they work. We also could demonstrate how we can use SL files to use simulation of a behavior of a system before we go really to the test with the equipment. We also had some feedback from the models of the feeder application, a few extensions that we proposed there to the standard. And with that, we are getting to the end. And I think we are now coming to the question and answer session. Yes, thank you, Christoph, and thank you to all the speakers for these uh, 